This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Rivian just landed another 800 million bucks from Volkswagen. VW had already committed $5 billion to Rivian to get its software to find vehicle technology, but now it's investing a total of $5.8 billion. The two automakers are forming a joint venture called Rivian and VW Group Technology LLC that will be headed up by Rivian's chief software engineer and VW's chief technology officer. It will employ about a thousand engineers who will work in Palo Alto and at several other locations. VW decided to go with Rivian after the startup converted an Audi to run on its compute stack in less than 12 weeks, something that VW spent years and billions of euros trying to do on its own. Even so, VW's first cars with Rivian's technology will not hit showrooms until 2027. Doge is the trading symbol for Dogecoin, a cryptocurrency that competes with Bitcoin and something that Elon Musk has tweeted about often. In fact, he was even sued over allegations of manipulating the price, a lawsuit that a judge later dismissed. Well, Doge is also the name of a new semi-official government department that will be run by Elon Musk and entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy. But in this case, Doge stands for Department of Government Efficiency. President-elect Trump says the two entrepreneurs will, quote, dismantle government bureaucracy, slash excess regulations, cut wasteful expenditures, and restructure federal agencies. Doge will partner with the White House's Office of Management and Budget, and the aim is to conclude their work on July 4th of 2026, which is also the 250th anniversary of the nation. The ACEA, or the Association of European Automakers, warns that the EV market in Europe is going from bad to worse and that the industry needs immediate regulatory relief. Using data from S&P Global, it forecasts that EV market share will only reach 21% by the end of next year, down from the 27% that was originally expected. Automakers in the EU face billions of euros in fines for missing harder CO2 regs that kick in next year. The ACEA says that to reach those targets, European automakers may have to pool their emissions with Chinese and American EV companies, meaning the European auto industry would be paying money to foreign automakers who compete against them. So it's asking for urgent relief from the fines and a quick review of the regulations. And as if to put an exclamation point on that, Ford announced it's cutting production of EVs in Europe because of significantly lower demand than it expected. Ford invested $2 billion to make the Explorer and the Capri EVs at its plant in Cologne, Germany. Those two EVs are built on Volkswagen's MEV platform. Hertz is increasing the number of EVs that it wants to sell from its fleet because it's losing too much money on them. If you didn't know, rental car companies don't make most of their money from renting cars. That money helps offset the depreciation before the vehicles are sold after a few years of service, which is where the real money comes from. But when Tesla, Hertz's largest EV provider, and other EV makers started cutting prices in 2022 and 2023, it wiped out massive amounts of value from Hertz's EV fleet. In the third quarter of this year, the rental car company reported that its vehicle depreciation was up by 89%. So instead of getting rid of 20,000 EVs this year, it wants to dump 30,000 and will continue to sell more through the end of next year as well. Some of those vehicles are already being sold at a discount, which will likely hurt the used value of those vehicles even more. And here's an interesting little tidbit to this whole story. It was former Ford CEO Mark Fields, who was interim CEO of Hertz at the time, that made that original announcement to buy 100,000 Teslas. It's not clear if that many ever entered the fleet, and then following CEO Stephen Shear made deals with Polestar and GM, and he eventually resigned over this whole EV fiasco.
knowing that a little rain won't slow down your day. That's what really matters. Bridgestone Toronza Quiet Track tires. Confident control in wet conditions. Chinese automaker Japung has people waiting in line for its land aircraft carrier. This is its large six-wheeled vehicle that can launch what is basically a small human-sized drone out of the back. It just demonstrated how the aircraft is removed from the vehicle, and then it performed its first public test for the world to see. It's quite the dance to get the personal VTOL out of the carrier, using its air suspension system and automatic landing gear to slowly slide it out. The arms holding the propellers can then be opened up, and it looks like it's pretty much ready to fly after that. Test versions of the all-electric craft currently have a flight time of about 35 minutes and a top speed of roughly 80 miles an hour or 130 kilometers an hour. The carrier is also capable of charging the VTOL from 30 to 80 percent in 18 minutes, so owners could juice up and fly more. But once they're done, the vehicle can automatically scoop the aircraft back up, similar to how it slid out just in reverse. And in case you're wondering, we saw a report that says it takes about five minutes to complete. Japung says it just got over 2,000 orders for the land aircraft carrier after its latest demonstration. And while that's not a big number, with a starting price of 280 grand, it would represent well over half a billion dollars in sales. And speaking of mobility, Waymo is opening up its service to everyone in LA. It's already given out more than 100,000 paid rides to people in the city, but that was slowly rolled out to customers who signed up to be on a waiting list. They gave an average rating of 4.7 out of 5 stars, which is what helped give Waymo the confidence to open the service 24-7 and to anyone that downloads and uses the app. It also currently offers paid autonomous rides in San Francisco and Phoenix, Arizona. The UAW is scaling back efforts to organize other plants in the U.S. After the union secured historic deals with GM, Ford, and Stellantis last year, President Sean Fain ratcheted up efforts to unionize the transplants and EV startups. And while the union did succeed in organizing Volkswagen's plant in Tennessee, its efforts to unionize more plants slowed after Mercedes workers in Alabama rejected the UAW back in May. Since that vote, the union hasn't sought recognition from a new automaker. Part of the reason interest in joining the UAW has slowed is non-union automakers have raised wages and increased bonuses for workers in response to the UAW's wins last year. And with most non-union plants located in the South where unions aren't as favorable, it's making it more difficult for the UAW to gain support. Chinese battery maker CATL says it's open to building a new factory in the U.S. if President-elect Trump allows it. The company's CEO says the U.S. government has denied allowing it to invest in the U.S. and the Biden administration has also prevented Chinese battery companies from receiving EV subsidies, as well as raising tariffs on Chinese EVs to 100%. But during the campaign, Trump said he's open to allowing Chinese companies in the U.S. as long as they build plants in the country. And CATL says it will consider doing so if it's allowed. While CATL doesn't operate its own plant in the U.S., it does have licensing deals with Ford and Tesla, providing them with its technology to make batteries, but it will not own the plants where they're produced. Sales of the Ford Ranger in the U.S. are recovering from last fall's crippling UAW strike that shut down the plant for 41 days. They're up a healthy 12% so far this year, and sales could get a healthy boost from the new 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6, which is also used in F-Series pickups as well as the Bronco. In the Ranger, the engine generates 315 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque. That's up from the 270 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque that the base 2.3 liter Turbo 4 makes. And the new engine is mated to a 10-speed automatic transmission compared to the 6-speed that comes with the Turbo 4. The EPA rates the 2.7 liter at 20 miles to the gallon, 
compared to 22 MPGs for the 2.3 liter. But that's a wrap for this show. Thanks for tuning in. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering boost your game. And by Tajin Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility. There's nothing wrong with heavy metal. Hey, light enough. But with world-class composite material, Tajin Automotive Technologies makes vehicles lighter, safer, and more eco-friendly. Developing today's vehicles, issues can happen in an instant. When's the best time to solve a problem? The minute you know you have one. Meet Wireless NeoVi Cloud, your secure, off-the-shelf solution empowering real-time collaboration for quick resolution. With Wireless NeoVi Cloud, your team can prevent issues before they can escalate. Driver, communication data, and remote diagnostics to analyze and resolve your problems using OTA, allowing your executives oversight throughout the process. Wireless NeoVi Cloud, your vehicle update solution in production and on the road. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data.